What's up guys, what's up YouTube? So today I will be doing a, a live commentary of a game I just played as Thresh. And this game will uh, teach you guys to be better Thresh players. So before I begin, I just want to discuss runes, masteries, and summoner spells um, when using Thresh. Now, as far as summoner spells are concerned, you always go Flash Exhaust as of, I would say, August 2013. I mean, just check out LCS, check out solo queue. That's what 95% of all decent support players use. Um, if you want to try something new, I would recommend maybe Flash Barrier or Flash Heal. Flash is just ideal for any situation. Um, but moving on to runes. Now, if you check out the top uh, support Thresh players in the world, Mad Life and uh, X Special. You can use a website called ProBuilds.net, and it will give you like all the stats. And as far as runes concerned, usually they go attack damage marks, and typically it's health quints, uh, flat magic resist glyphs, and armor flat seals. And this is what they go in most of their games. And there's a good reason. Like you might be wondering, why don't they go something like uh, GP10? Wait, let me just first unpause this. Why don't they go something like GP10 or something else? And the reason is simply because you, as Thresh, you impose early game dominance, and therefore GP10 is more of a late game item. Basically, it's saying, okay, by 30 minutes in this game, you will get like a hundred or 200 gold. You don't need that early game. Early game, you need tankiness and damage, and that's what the attack damage marks do. Each auto attack just does so much damage on Thresh. Um, it's just because of his base stats and how he functions. And with that extra attack damage from the marks, it makes him OP, and that's why he gets unique runes, which are very different from any other support champion's runes. And so I'm playing as uh, Thresh, as you can see here, and this is a very, very tough game. Uh, it's a, uh, I would say, diamond slash challenger level on the public beta environment, which is probably, it's low, it's much, definitely lower than any other server's uh, challenger or diamond quality, but it's still pretty tough. Uh, and you will see how I dominate. So I'm, I'm just going to play until probably uh, l l the end of laning phase, because by then we're probably like 20 kills and they have like one kill. So first things first, as Thresh, uh, as far as spells go, you usually want to go, as you can see here, here are the spells. You want to max Dark Passage first, which is the Lantern. It, it's an AoE shield. You guys know what it does. And that's typically because it's an AoE shield first off. It's so much protection. As well as, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And most supports, if you check out, again, probuilds.net, most professional supports will max Dark Passage first, no matter what, no matter how they're playing. And as you can see here, I am leashing blue for them. Uh, because this Hecarim's a little low, and I don't know, I can't trust this uh, uh, Kate, I leashed a little longer than I typically do. Most of the time, you just want like one or two autos, throw out your lantern, and then go back. As you can see, um, I chose Death Sentence first though, because you want that early game presence, and um, the thing is, as Thresh, even when versus someone like Leona, you want that early game presence. And okay, they're going on it immediately. So uh, Twitch is going ham on. Uh, okay, we took a bad trade there. He got like three autos off and then expunged. Took out pretty much half of Kate's damage. Uh, fortunately, uh, she went longsword and two pots, which is good. She gets to recuperate that. If she had gone something else. She might have had to recall there or be forced to zone out. So smart move by him. And versus this sort of team comp, you always want to auto attack Twitch without being called out by Leona. And this is what I'm doing right here. I want to auto attack whatever I can without being called out. And as you can see here, there's a trade going down. Leona lands her stuff. Barrier goes down. I land my uh, grab right onto. Uh, Twitch, I keep going, he blows his barrier, they exhaust me, I flash over, E, him, and then he f he goes over, and then I auto, and I take him down. Very, very simple play. And as you can see, um, you never give up there. You keep going. As you can see, 
Uh, Leon is low, so I'm going to unpause this. And we keep going. As you can see, I always auto attack while I move. Move auto, move auto, and then boom. You take both down. K blows his flash. That's how we do it. Uh, and I keep saying E, but let's just give a name for this. This is Flay. And as you can see, most of the time you want to go Lantern level 2. Uh, why? Because it just provides a tremendous escape opportunity. If K is here and a jungler comes out here, uh, Thresh can be right here, throw his lantern here. She can click that, boom, you're in safety. However, the reason why I went uh, E first, Flay, or E second, was because I just leveled up, and because of that Flay, and I will replay it just so you guys can see it, um, that Flay allowed me to CC down Twitch and provide a kill on Twitch. So it's... You have to have very fast timing. I had literally leveled up uh, under half a second before I um, killed uh, Thresh. So that's the t type of timing you kind of need. And more importantly, look at how I'm always looking for uh, pool opportunities. The 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 Q I landed. Let me. What's the Q called? Death sentence. The death sentence I landed which pulled in Twitch, pretty much secured me that kill. Had I missed it or done something different, it would have been very, very different. And so uh, once this play starts, uh, I will slow it down and show you guys how it goes. Anyhow, as you can see here, the point of this lane, um, Leona being just as tanky with even more CC than me, you always have to play safe. Always go for any auto attack you can on anyone without uh, free freaking coming close to being caught by Leona. Now as you can see here, they have because of the positioning of where I am, K is being harassed, right? And so some people might say, oh that's a bad move as a support. You really want to stay near your freaking AD carry. Well here's the thing. Twitch can choose who he autos. By me standing in front doesn't really mean anything because I'm not Leona and since I'm not Leona, my uh, Dark Passage, which is my Q ability, it can't go through minions. So I have no sort of real threat here. And they, she can he can still auto-attack Kate. Granted, my flame might be able to zone slightly. However, by playing here, I've managed to chunk lot or twitch down by quite a bit. And uh, that's pretty much what I'm doing. And as you can see, uh, twitch is in fact going on Kate here. But it's all good. As you can see, I auto attack Leona again. And here is something bad. Uh, and let me just pause real quick. Some people might say, oh, you should have stood in front of Kate. That wouldn't have mattered because of how her E ability works. It passes through everyone until it hits the last person in line, which is pretty much what they designed Leona to do. So standing in front, not a good decision by, uh, by me. What I could have done was Lantern automatically. I kind of did not. She she did a very good job of uh, barriering now. And as you can see, most Threshes at this instance, they would have used my dark the Dark Passage and pulled Leona away from the turret. What, this is completely bad because she's taking turret aggro, which is good. And I see Twitch here with very low HP. And it's a very clear, very simple pull. So you just throw that down, land it, and then you want to keep it going. And in fact, if you play it right, what you want to do is you want to let the pool go until this bar just drops until about here. And then you want to press press Q again, which activates the second part of his uh, Q ability, which is called Deathly Leap, which extends the CC duration just slightly, allowing him to be CC down a little bit more. And that's what I kind of do. I do it a slightly bit early just to be safe. And as you can see, he's still kind of CC down. And then I auto. It's very important. A lot of specialists do not do this. And especially when you have attack damage runes, it's very important to auto. And as as always, don't forget about summoner spells. Exhaust him. He barriers. And as you can see, I am definitely auto attacking while running towards him. I flash because I'm not in range. Flay back. Remember, I just leveled up. And then as you can see here, he drops to 10 HP. Will he get away? Again, it's critical. Because of my auto attack, this is what finishes him off. Boom. And that's how important it is. And as you can see, the rest is just very simple. You just clean up Leona, Leona as well. You, you turned a potential death to a potential victory. 
And so um, let's just fast forward a bit until then, until they get back into lane. But you get the idea, right? <coughs> and so as Thresh, you have to really play to be aggressive, especially early game, because you have tank runes, you have probably tank masteries, and usually for masteries, I go something like uh, 114, um, 114, I believe it's 15. Uh, and usually you want to spend most of your money, most of your points in the utility tree and some in your defense. And then just put one in the offense tree for your exhaust. And so with this lane matchup, it's a little bit different. You can't play balls through the wall. And some people might say, oh, you're playing hella aggressive. Well, actually, this is, for me, fairly passive uh, because I'm versus Leona. Leona tr provides just as much tank tankiness as me, if not more, and more CC. So it's very, very uh, dif different. And the main advantage you have versus Leona is that you're a range while she is melee. These are all things you have to keep in mind. And so you want to auto attack both of them but this is important you always want to focus twitch on top of leona why because twitch is always a lot squishier and by taking him out first you cut off all damage he is your the main damage source you want to focus him as long as you don't put yourself in risk like if i just walked up to twitch and started autoing leona would have me cc down and i probably would have lost the trade due to just you know being cc down and beaten and so you, you want to take any sort of auto attacks like here. Uh, you want to auto attack any of them without taking any sort of uh, trade backwards. So I'm just getting free damage off on them. And as you can see, with both of us uh, kiting them, they have pretty much dropped. Like Leon is down to about 70% uh, HP and Twitch is down to about 80 to 90% HP, which is still something. Like every little bit counts in these sort of um, fights. And so here I am just taking more damage on Twitch. I got him down to 50% now. And I missed the flay, obviously, pretty bad. Missed the lantern. However, lands, I land my Dark Passage yet again. He goes in, l hits the trap, beautiful trap by Kate, and we secure the kill. So let me just play that back real quickly. Hold on, guys, hold on. And I'll play in the slow motion so you guys get a quick understanding. Okay, so here I missed my flay, which was bad, but it was very close. He backed out immediately after I autoed, which was very smart. Now here, they decide to go straight on Kate as he gets a little bit too close. Leona should have walked up and eed, but she was smart. She autoed twice, eed backwards, which prevented Leona from attacking. She backs off, and it seems like the trade's done. Nope perfect dark passage from me you pull him in he immediately starts his Q which stealths him his Q is called ambush and so he's taking a lot of damage from my autos note the key thing is to auto attack while this stuff is going down now he right here he goes into complete stealth if it wasn't for this trap he would have gotten away the trap lands that's pretty much a secure kill and it's GG and it's all always about landing the dark passage now, in terms of maxing abilities after your, um, excuse me, I've been calling Death Sentence Dark Passage this whole time. Excuse me, it's his Q ability is called Death Sentence, not Dark Passage. Uh, anyhow, after maxing Dark Passage this entire time, um, I apologize for that. I meant to refer to my Death Sentence, not my Dark Passage. Uh, okay, so here we're trying to go on Leona, right? But it's very, very hard. Uh... Kate should try and tank, but unfortunately, she never does. So I keep autoing and backing off, which really, really chunks me. She never chooses to go in while the turret is shooting on me, which is bad. See, I just do it again and again. Like she's, and She finally decides to go in, but unfortunately, it's not enough. She should have stayed a little bit longer and auto attacked. She was full HP, plus my Dark Passage. So it was very, very bad on her part. She should have gotten that kill off. <clears throat> Anyhow, in terms of maxing abilities, after Dark Passage, you want to max Flay. A lot of people get this wrong and they go for Death Sentence. 
And the thing with Descents is uh, it's a hook ability like Blitz Crank. And therefore, it's very, very hard to land. And you only damage them. And the damage isn't that great anyways. Um, it's magic damage based. The damage isn't that great anyways. And because of that, it's very rare you, you land one and you won't deal that much damage. So after Dark Passage, you want to forego maxing Death Sentence and start maxing Flay. Obviously, you always want to have a point in Death Sentence. In fact, I recommend getting a point at level 1, um, depending on the situation. Sometimes you want to go uh, Death Sentence at level 2 and Dark Passage at level 1. But you want to max Flay second. Why? Because of the passive. Not because of the active, the passive. Basically, it builds up massive, massive damage. Um, when you're not attacking. So as you can see, it says here, deals 23 to 77, 77 magic damage each hit and builds up without attacking. This is plus 80% of your attack damage. So essentially, when you have attack damage marks <clears throat> and you are maxing Flay, you will be dealing tremendous damage, surprising amounts of damage with your auto attacks. And people don't sus suspect this. So they're just like, oh yeah, a support is auto attacking me, whatever, and they ignore it. And then they're chunked to half HP, and then the my AD carry finishes them off. And so here I'm going to show you again. Oh, I just missed a, a great play by me. Third death sentence landed by me. Um, uh, <clears throat> what was I talking about before? Anyhow, yeah, we are 0 7, if you guys didn't notice. But what was I talking about before I get into this big play? Um, yes, so. A lot of people forget the damage, so always go attack damage marks and max flay second, and pretty much you, on your own, as you will see, can take down a, a attack damage carry with just your auto attacks by surprising them with the damage you do uh, before they even notice. So let's play the clip. Let me slow it down here. In this instance, we see. Um, we see Leona get caught by a trap. Like maybe she went in intentionally to alleviate the trap, and a lot of supports would choose. Oh, this is a clear hook, but I'm not going to take it. Why? Because it's Leona. She's a tank. It's not worth pulling her. You should always go for the attack damage carry. And so I auto attack her. And <clears throat> here's the thing. In this very instance, I pause it right here. In this very instance. Uh, it's like they're right sometimes you shouldn't go for the Le Leona and sometimes you do just to get that a little bit of damage off in order to pull her and so Kate can auto attack her however I see something very very clear here I was in fact planning on pulling Leona but at this moment let's just back up a little bit <clears throat> and play the clip again I, I think that was a little far too early so Essentially here, I was uh, I was going to pull Leona, but at that very moment, when she backs off, I see Twitch coming in. Why? Because he Twitch probably thought that I would pull Leona. And I mean, you can clearly see what's going to happen here. He like once he hits this spot from here, he's screwed. And landing this hook was kind of hard because there is a little bit of a delay before you actually release your hook after you press Q but yeah I was fully going to hook Leona here because by pulling her in and because Thresh or Twitch at the moment was around here Kate because she she has like the longest range initially of any attack damage carry in lane she could have harassed and gotten a few a couple extra auto attacks off for free on Leona which would have chunked her and dramatically reduced her presence however Twitch came in here because maybe he thought um, I couldn't he, he probably thought that I was going for Leona and I was auto attacking Leona as well uh, just to get that little bit of damage off without for free and she thought he thought maybe he could just you know harass me a little bit and get that off for free anyhow I hook him let me just put it at half time. I hook him. Come, I, I pull in immediately. Why? Because I want to get that flay off. See, seeing him down for good. <clears throat> and from here, I'm just auto attacking very, very hard. 
I don't know why he ran this direction first off, but we were, they CC'd me down, but isn't enough. We keep chasing, he's stealth, so we can't really do anything. His stealth gets undetected, I continue chasing him, and here is where the plays, mar plays happen, okay? Let me just back off just to show you this. Um, now, it seems very simple what happens, but it's actually quite complicated. Let me just uh, start from here. So I made a, a, a little bit of a mistake by uh, releasing my my uh, death sense ability immediately once I landed the pool on him. And I guess I did that in order to secure the flay, which is even more CC, whereas if I had let it go for a little longer, I might have missed it. Um, a little bit, I need to improve on my mechanics. Usually, you always want to let, once you land your death sentence, you always want to let it go for like at least 60% of its duration before you even consider using your second half death leap in order to come to your opponent. That way you increase the CC time. I made a little bit of a mistake here, however, it still goes good. So he immediately gets exhausted by me and he starts stealthing immediately to run away. He, he, okay, I understand why he, he didn't just run straight back. He had to move this way in order to avoid this trap. Had he hit the trap, the stealth would have uh, canceled and he would have died. So notice here, I turned level 6, right? But before I landed the hook, I was still level 5. As you can see, we are already out leveling them and the lane is already pretty much done we're level six he's she's level four he's level five that's just due to zoning pressure i'm putting up as well as just uh securing kills and pushing the lane up so here he is stealth and i have already max I've, I've just leveled up so what i do here is i pretty much uh max six of course get level six flash and then alt he flashes as well Pops his HP pot. What I do is I try and auto attack him. I auto attack him once. He barriers. K finishes him, him off with a auto attack. Now here I'm taking turret aggro and Leona actually lands her stuff here. And most supports here would say, oh, I, I'm just going to stay. It's over. GG. Immediately, there's three options. Stay like the noobs or auto attack her and try and take her down with me or three run. And it's a play between option two and three. You want to gauge if you can survive or not and how to do it. So in order to do it, sometimes you have to lower their HP and kill them faster. And sometimes uh, you have to run. So what I choose to do here, and it all happens very, very quickly. <clears throat> At first, I think I can stay. So I'm auto attacking her. Then I realize, okay, this is not good. I might die. So then I start running. And yeah, double kill. And so it's always important to recall away from tri brush. As you can see, it was warded here, and there's no one in, in the vicinity. I saw earlier up top, so rather than recalling, I canceled, and I auto attacked the turret. Why? Because it's very important to uh, take it down when you know there's no one in the vicinity. We had just taken out bot lane. The jungler was not close, and I believe we saw I saw the mid laner somewhere. Actually, that's a lie. I didn't. I just went on a whim that we could take out the mid laner if he came and so <clears throat> i guess i'm going to let the rest of this clip play at two times speed pretty much we pretty much stomped them um i believe the final score was like 30 11 or something in terms of kills and i will go ahead and commentate this at uh normal speed well maybe i'll go a little faster Let's wait for some big plays. So here I am coming mid, trying to get a gank off on Fabi. Fabi somehow knows. I guess he just has that intuition. Um, maybe I, I was spotted by that ward. We don't know. However, I come in again to try and gank Fabi. 
uh, this isn't the real Fabi, by the way. It might be, it might not be, but he is. This Fabi is challenger on PVE, probably a fake. I don't know. Anyhow, um, <clears throat> we're coming in mid, deciding to take the turret, and it's pretty simple. You know, four mid, very very simple. I see bot lane pushing, which is why I keep spam pinging bot lane, and my Kate does not notice. She decides to, you know, one v one, uh, Fabi mid. And so I'm like, screw you, Kate. We need to defend. So I come in as as a ganker. And I know these people will get to the turret to save it. But I'm coming in to gank, which is why I keep pinging with these on my way pings. I come in. They, they don't notice. Then they notice. And here's the thing. I have my alt up, but he had already stealthed. Um, and at this moment, I was thinking, should I alt or not? And I decide not to because his stealth is a very short thing. I missed my flay. Again, as you can see his, here, his stealth, he unstealths. So from here, um, I try and get his, I try and get the hook off, but he jukes pretty well. And then um, what I do is I alt for Leona. Leona has stayed too long. And yeah, you pretty much go from there. And a lot of people, they just, they would have gone for Twitch and missed Leona there. So I'm not going to rewind that or replay that. You get the idea. Now let's commentate this, this uh, Lee Sin top because he's godlike. He's 6-1 right now, going straight glass cannon build with a few wards, and he's just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, I'm sorry you missed some of his plays earlier, but I mean, sh go. I mean, you know how Lee Sin is. I'm sure you know how ridiculously OP Lee Sin is. In fact, I'll just focus on him for the rest of this game. So uh, as you can see, Lee Sin here, he pretty much camps in that jungle for about... A long long time and then he gets he gets Xerath ulted he manages to uh, kill with ignite and then he gets taken out by Xerath I believe nope Xerath is out of mana he should have gone on him but he did not oh because uh, earlier is coming so earlier King trick trick 2g is coming in probably a fake trick 2g he's coming in he lands his Q on uh, Xerath gets it off boom shields off to the turret Good, great, great, great play. Uh, as you can see there, uh, he actually camped in this brush for about two or three straight minutes. And the reason is simply because it's to pretend like he recalled. And that's pretty much what you see pros doing a lot. They, they waste a lot of time just camping in areas just to give off a, so a false vibe, which he does profit from there. And by the way, Baron will be spawning for the first time in about 20 seconds. So Baron spawn, but we never really take it this game. Like we never choose to take Baron. Hecarim runs into Yi here, and the game's pretty much over. It's two fourteen, but uh, he comes in here. He doesn't get the kill off, and he just backs away. Now let's go back to me. Um, I decide to push mid with two AD carries, as was AD carry mid. He's going this like frost icebone gauntlet move uh, thing. I see a uh, trick 2G here and I know he has to either flash or die because we have him cornered. So he chooses to run. Uh, I land my pool and it's pretty much a death. Had I missed the pool, he might have been able to bear stance out there and then do some like crazy running. Um, but here it's simply a matter of knowing how to split push. We have the lead. The point is not to lose it and continuously keep winning lane. Um, let me just play that back. What, uh, Lee Sin did there, just so I can commentate it. So Lee Sin is coming in, and the whole point of Lee Sin is you always want to land your Q. Otherwise, securing a kill is very hard. So he safeguards in, and from here, he E's him down just to slow him. He doubles E's, K alts him, and from here, he lands his Q, which is pretty much OP. He roundhouse kicks, then secures it up with the second part of his Q, Resonating Strike. And that is the pre, pretty much how you want to play Lee Sin. You want to safeguard in, get very close, then land your Q, uh, E, then double E to uh, hit the second part, which is Cripple, which slows them down, reduces their move speed by 60%. Then you just auto attack, roundhouse kick, which pushes them away, but because you have already locked down your Q, you secure the uh, kill by finishing it, the second part of your E off with Resonating Strike, 
uh, gap closing and yeah just escaping and then he gets killed there which was pretty bad by him so I know there's like three in base now so I'm trying to split push uh, Kate I don't know what she's doing Hecarim's trying to push bot and it's all good So here we decide to play a little bit cocky. We keep, we just keep pushing mid. Like I keep pushing mid by myself. And eventually there's a point where there's like three people mid and it's just me. Oh yeah, let's play that back again. That was a that was a pretty uh, cool pull by me. Um, <clears throat> so let me just show you guys what happened. You always have to look for pulls for your death sentence. And as you can see here, what happened was uh, Twitch, I believe, was farming or he was taking wolves or something like that. And he was coming back out, but then the waves had come in. And that's a common mistake by people in general in whatever ranking. They will clear out waves, and if you're pushing hard enough, that's the reward of pushing hard enough, they won't, they won't, um, they'll underestimate the wave. And therefore, they'll just like come back into lane, and we'll already will will already be all up in their grill. And because of that, um, what happens here is he comes in, Ezreal cued him with his um, Mystic shot. He tries and dodges it, misses, and then he decides, okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna come straight back in and go on the turret. I see a perfect opportunity here. He, there's no minions blocking him, nothing blocking him, and. I just throw out my Q. Very simple. From here, it's very simple. Uh, you want to let this go down to about here, if you're good here. But most people, uh, you mess up if you don't release it here because you don't. Ha most people don't have that reaction speed. You want to get, keep this going for as long as you can. Then activate the second part, which is called Deathly Leap. Then you come in and immediately uh, E them backwards. You always have to have the mouse pointed this way so you you uh, flay them backwards then automatically you alt and then start auto attacking them so uh, just that half, half speed and unfortunately that wasn't enough to kill him but it did deal quite a bit of damage and here is another cool part okay so they start chasing me right <clears throat> right after uh, twitch gets away Trick 2G comes in with his uh, bear stance. This isn't the real Trick 2G, probably not. Um, but he comes in with his bear stance, and Leona goes on Ezreal. Here, and if you rewind the clip, I'm not going to rewind it myself, but if you rewind the clip, I made it a very clear point to not run with Ezreal. You want to split off. Why? Because the two of them can't split off. If they do, they won't have kill potential. And so, by splitting off, they have to choose which one to go for. And pretty much, Erdier, dis Erdier decided to go for me. Leona decided to go for Ezreal. And Ezreal pretty much is able to finish off Leona. However, Trick 2G, you, you'll notice here that uh, Trick 2, um, excuse me, Erdier, he switches back to Ezreal after about 0.5 seconds, which isn't a lot to some but it's a lot to me um, I have delayed earlier by about half a second which is huge uh, especially at high level games um, it's huge amount of time which is enough for uh, Ezreal to do what he does just just watch what happens Arcane shifts back manages to kill Ezreal and then he just switches on to uh, earlier if he can't beat him he escapes and then K just comes in to save save them <coughs> here is where uh wait why am i over there how did i get over there did i flash over what happened to me did i flash over no i just walked all the way no no, no i walked through one of these ways yes and here's another uh pretty cool play by me i go into the brush because uh xerath and twitch have now showed up and this is what i do at first my my lantern of dark passage was thrown uh initially to protect them but then i'm like you know what we can go on them so 
I throw out my lantern to protect them, and then I start running towards them. Miss my flay, which is bad. And here you see, uh, what I do is I flash forward with my dark passage, and just see what happens next. I land my uh, thing. It unstealths him. I uh, death leap over, flay him, and unfortunately he's restealthed again. So not much could be done there. And there Xerath goes with his ultimate ability. It does some damage, does some good poke damage, but Arcane Barrage is not enough. Here comes Hecarim with his ability. He ults in and we pretty much get a kill off on Xerath, I believe. Hmm, double kill. It's pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole game, guys. If you guys really want to see more, stay. Otherwise, like, favorite, and subscribe for more uh, commentaries and other stuff. And yeah, as you can see there, Lee Sin did the same sort of uh, exact same combo. He uh, used his safeguard. And here's a, here's a very good thing you should not do. You shouldn't use the second part of safeguard, Iron Will. Why? Because you have limited energy for your full combo so what you want to do is safeguard over tempest then cripple and then um well first off you want to do tempest and cripple as well as uh sonic wave simultaneously if you can and then from there once you've landed sonic wave which is crucial and the hardest part with lee mechanics you want dragon rage and this whole time you want to be auto attacking dragon rage and then finish up with the resonating strike which is the second part of q and that's pretty much how you land your full combo And this Yi is what? What's his? What's this Yi score? One eight, and he's still building T amount. Jeez. And just so you guys are wondering, um, I believe someone got Challenger after this game. I don't know who, but just a perspective. This is public beta environment server PBE, and uh, there's a lot less people playing on here, so they're all. I wouldn't deem these people challenger level quality, but uh, I would say it's it's very similar. The Hecarim I confirmed in chat after this game that he is diamond like five on the main servers, and on here he is also diamond five. So I don't know. He's he's rising pretty quickly though, so it's a little it's it's definitely easier, more than a little easier on PBE. And I don't believe there's not there's not too many other plays other than Erdier being here. I don't know why he's here. But he is and he dies. And so one one thing is that a lot of people tend to just keep pushing mid. And ooh yeah, dang. Okay, there's the surrender vote. So as always, thank you guys for watching and as always like, favorite and subscribe. See ya.